So, hi everyone, my name is Anthony. I am a second year undergraduate student in the sciences program here at Brock University. For why I chose Brock University in general in the program of sciences itself. So Brock University not only is it a fantastic school with top achievements in its mental health services and more, it's also very close to my home. So that's actually really convenient. So I don't have to you know stay on campus. I get to save a few extra dollars. Uh, yeah, and it just makes it all that worth the while. That way I can just drive to school every day. In terms of the program, why I selected it specifically, it actually allows me to select all the prerequisites I need to apply to pharmacy school in the future. So the sciences program is actually super flexible, which is really beneficial to me. The sciences program is actually super flexible. So that could be a pro to some, that could be a con to others. For me, it's a pro because like I said, I'm applying to pharmacy school in the future. So it's super important for me. That way I can pick and choose all of the courses I need, but it might be a con for some people who they don't entirely know what they want to be when they get older. So they could just be picking and choosing courses that they might not necessarily need to have taken. And that could be a waste of time for some students or even a waste of money. I mean, it's completely up to them. Some students even like that flexibility so that way they can just pick and choose whatever courses they like or you know might interest them that way can they can just test out university life and see how it is so yeah the flexibility is probably the only pro and con of the program in terms of passion for the program characteristics well that's actually how I knew this program was for me because it actually fit all of my interests such as pursuing a career in pharmacy so the passion or the reason I wanted to pursue sciences came from my passion for wanting to pursue pharmacy school and I knew that taking sciences would allow me to get there. Now, Brock University is actually incredibly inclusive, helpful, supportive, and accessible. So you'll find those key traits amongst the university. Now, culture and most importantly, cultural diversity is actually very welcomed with open arms at Brock. So that's really nice because not only will you feel accepted yourself, but you'll also get the opportunity to experience so many different cultures, which is great. It just makes everything that much more worthwhile. I would say the teaching styles are pretty diverse. It depends not on the program, more of the courses that you choose. So the courses that you're exposed to, they have all different types of learning and teaching styles, which is nice because most of us don't just learn from one method, including myself, I learn best from multiple methods, which is nice. Now evaluations, they can take place in the forms of exams, midterms, lab exams, assignments, tutorial questions, and more. So again, very diverse as well. Some students, they might be like, oh, you know, I'm bad test takers or I'm, I'm bad exam takers. Well, it helps because there's those alternate methods as well. In terms of the workload of the program, again, all depends on the individual courses you take. Some courses are a bit heavier. Some courses have more components to them. So usually most courses will have like a lecture component as their main component, but then they'll have secondary components. So some courses have a lab, some have a tutorial, some have a seminar, but some courses have all three. So it honestly depends. I would say you're graded more heavily by your exam. So in university, your exams tend to be a bit higher of a percentage of your overall grade. Again, it more depends on your program as well. I know plenty of students who their, their final exam could cover 60% or 50% of their overall average, which is cool. So it's all it's all completely different. It depends on your program. So definitely look into that. In terms of your assignments, those are a great time to boost your mark as well. So if you're finding that a final exam is taking a big amount of your average, make sure to look into that because your assignments could take overall a big percentage as well, which is nice. So it gives you that further opportunity instead of just having that one hit or miss exam. In terms of how do you study, I'd say it all depends completely on yourself. Some students can only you know, study an hour a day or two hours a day, it all honestly varies. But I'd say study as much so that you understand the material. And if you don't feel like you know, if you've got extra time, study some more. If you finish all your practice questions, do some more. It's very helpful to try your hardest and, and just you know keep practicing, right? Practice makes perfect, but it's not just practice makes perfect. It's an expression I like to use is perfect practice makes perfect. If you're not constantly improving every single time you practice, then you're always at the same spot. So keep practicing, keep taking those chances and make mistakes, but also learn from those mistakes as well. So in the first year sciences, it's recommended that you take a variety of courses that are all in your course calendar. So you have to take a sciences context credit, a humanities context credit, a social sciences context credit, and then I believe you have two electives. For me, I took a variety of different courses based off of what I need to apply to pharmacy school. So it all depends on the student, but as long as you're taking those courses, that's all that matters. Context credits are pretty much like I like to call specific electives. So even though you can choose whatever you want for them, it has to be under those 
categories of a context credit. So we have a context credit list here at Brock, and they separate into three different ones, humanities, social sciences, and sciences context credit. So as long as you're choosing from those lists, then that's all that matters, and it will satisfy it, which is really cool. And then your two electives, those are truly, you can choose whatever you like. So of course, choose something that interests you. Don't just choose something that sounds easy, because you know things become way easier when you actually are interested in them. Trust me, that's something you definitely want to follow. So in terms of what to expect, whether the content is more suitable or unsuitable for someone else, the humanities context credit, for example, IAFC 1FC01 or 1FC02, which I took, was more English-like. So more writing essays, more humanities-like, right? Interpretation, groups, debates, discussions, that kind of stuff. The math and science subjects, at least to me, were more hands-on with applications. And here we'd see a lot more labs, numbers, crunching numbers, calculations, that kind of stuff. Well, to get into your, the sciences program, you actually need a, I believe I have it right here. The mid cutoff is a 70. In terms of the prerequisites you need to get in, they are two from biology, chemistry, physics, calculus and vectors, functions, earth science, and computer science. So you need at least two of those. And the recommended subjects as well, additionally to that, is a 4U English, so a grade 12 English. In terms of scholarships, Brock offers actually a new incoming student scholarship, which is really cool, and that's a different incoming averages. So if you're coming in with an 80 or 70 or a 90 percent average into university from high school, you might be eligible for an incoming student average. I also highly recommend you apply for the One App. So One App is on our, your Brock portal when you come a Brock student and that just handles all of the scholarships for you. So you put in a bunch of information and it like generates if you're eligible for specific scholarships, which is really cool. I would highly recommend taking the following courses that I already mentioned, but also come into university ready to explore new things as well. You'll probably have electives along the way, so again, that's a time to lessen your course load, take later things, but again, keep in mind, take things that you're interested in. In terms of spreading out classes, whether you have to in order to you know make time, no need to spread out your classes. You will always have 10 minute transition unless you are taking a class off campus in somewhere, let's say like downtown St. Catharines and the Maryland Iowaka School of Fine and Performing Arts, but to get from class to class you want to be online at 6 a.m. in the morning on your registration day for registering so when you register for classes 6 a.m. on your registration date and that's how you want to make sure that you're prepared to register for classes also I actually work for this program but there's a summer orientation program offered to all Brock students for free that are going into their first year and it's known as smart start it's an introductory program for a university helps you transition smoothly and we also do course registration checks which is really nice Looking for housing as soon as you can is what I would recommend. It's always good to get a head start on these things. However, there is not too much of a rush in terms of deciding which place you're going to choose because there's tons of opportunities in St. Catharines. But of course, don't wait for the last minute. Don't let uh, landlords pressure you into buying things or to sign something immediately or really fast. That's kind of actually the mark of a bad landlord. So you don't want to look for that kind of stuff. There is a party culture, but only if you want to be exposed to it. So it's not like our university is a party school or anything like that. It's there if you want to choose. So of course there'll be parties around at people's houses, that kind of stuff, but it's your choice if you want to go to it. So that's nice to have that option in terms of popular spots. I'd say the Bruce Trail. Students love the Bruce Trail. It's a beautiful trail that's on Brock University, really easily accessible. Uh, if you love to hike, especially in all seasons, it really doesn't matter. And that's throughout campus as well. So highly recommend doing that. It allows you to stay on campus, be safe, but also get that beautiful nature vibe. In terms of what clubs do I suggest, definitely get involved here at Brock. Brock actually offers over 150 plus clubs, which is phenomenal. So it's a great way to get involved. You don't always have to be on like the political boards of the club. So of course there's stuff like the treasurer, the vice president, those kind of things. That's where the responsibilities of the student starts to grow a bit more. So as far as I know, University of Brock is extremely diverse and inclusive, especially amongst acknowledging the land on which Brock is built from the indigenous communities, which is really nice. If you are looking for diversity and inclusion along with a school that incorporates transitioning to being even more diverse and welcoming in their plan slash goals, Brock is the school for you. So we're constantly growing, we're constantly improving, and we're adapting as well, which is really nice. Do different minority groups, ethnicities, or cultures feel welcome? I cannot actually speak for any minorities in terms of how they feel, being 
being at Brock as I am not a part of those minorities and it is not my place to actually take the role of their voices. It's their right to speak. But I can speak for Brock as an institution as not only am I a student and part of it, but also actually a, an employee as well. And I can honestly say that Brock tries their hardest to be welcoming as possible, no matter who you are. Along with this, Brock is forever improving and listens to their students, at least I find. So as an institution as a whole, I can speak on behalf of them and say, yeah, they are very welcoming in terms of trying to be better. I can say Brock student resources are phenomenal. Our mental health services are actually rated number one in student satisfaction. The lengths our employees go for mental health is phenomenal. Female support, LGBTQ, diversity, slash money, and more are also very supported as well. Minorities and students who are the first to go to university in their family are also support as well, especially with specific scholarships, which is really cool. We at Brock also have what's known as Boosters Health and Dental Plan, which is like Brock University's very own health and dental insurance, which is incredibly useful. You can use all of Brock services from the doctor's office, pharmacy, all the way to massage therapists, which is absolutely incredible. make every choice in terms of pursuing happiness uh, and better version of yourself in the world. So remember, we want to leave this world being better versions of ourselves and trying to make this world as better as we can in the meantime. So fight for justice, fight for happiness, and work hard. Stay organized by figuring out what has to get done as soon as possible and what needs to be done right away. Try not to procrastinate. It's one of the worst things that can happen to you as a student, especially in university. Financially, don't buy anything you don't have to. Of course, treat yourself and stuff like that, but you know, make sure to budget as much as you can and buy the things, you know, of course that make you happy, but be reasonable. So save when you can and buy all the necessities first. For self-care and mental health, exercise, super important. So time and time again, you will hear that exercise is good for you and it's true. You'll hear it all the time, that rhymes. I know not everyone likes exercising, but the sooner you realize it is beneficial for your well-being and your mental health, the better. Exercising is so good after a long day at work, going for a walk, standing up and getting fresh air can do wonders for your health. Trust me on this one, I know for a fact. When I spent my first year completely online, I found that I would just start to get tired looking at my computer all day long and instead of going to sit on my couch, at the afternoon I'd go for a walk or I'd go for a run. And honestly, as soon as I got back, I would feel like I had so much energy that I didn't even realize I had before. And that's because you're just your mind starts to shut down like as you're just looking at a computer all day long. It's nice to get some fresh air. So exercise is super important. To end off with a final message, I just want to say um, that is everything. Uh, that's all I have to offer for you today. Remember that university is actually a big part of your life and also an incredible experience. One that you are paying for, so have fun. Enjoy yourself in and outside of your studies and just live. Live it up. Have a great time. Be realistic. Be optimistic. And make this world a better place than you found it. Take care and uh, thank you for watching this video.